emergency. Today on Rescue 911, home hazard. An unsuspecting couple succumbs to carbon monoxide. I think the people might be inside. Be there as firefighters drag them from the deadly house. There's one in here! At 22, Bill Kruger took his job seriously. He knew all the rules, and he followed them. But on November 6, 1988, in Skokie, Illinois, it would not be enough to just follow procedure. That Sunday morning was cold and wet. Bob and Magda Brown were at home, catching up on household chores. My wife and I were down in the basement working. I say, hey, something is wrong. It's cold here. So right away, I know that the furnace is not working. We find the pilot light is off, and then Magda has to start lighting it. Mm -hmm. There it is. Oh, it's not working. She had to light several matches to, in order to finally get it going. We continued working until she left me to go upstairs to go to prepare lunch. All of a sudden, I realized that she says, oh my God, I don't feel well. I'm Something's sick. wrong. Mom, she says, my heart is beating so fast. My heart is beating so fast. I says, let me check your pulse. And I started checking it. I thought, what the heck is this? And it was beating more than twice as fast as mine. She says to me, don't you smell the gas? Don't you smell the gas? I says, Magda, there's no gas smell. Not knowing what was wrong, Bob began calling anyone he could think of for help. But their family doctor was not in. And their daughter, Rochelle, was not home. There's one call I gotta make. Magda says there's gas, and I call up the gas company. I said, my wife is violently sick. She's got a headache. She's thrown up. She smells gas. Therefore, I'd appreciate somebody coming out. When we continue. The serviceman was convinced that there was a good chance somebody was in the house. They were afraid that if he was right, they would be dead. Every day, all across America, unsung heroes are on the scene, saving lives. Witness courage and compassion in action. Paramedics, next on Discovery Health Channel. Bob's call to the gas company was relayed by dispatcher Steve Jones to 22-year-old field serviceman Bill Kruger. Quick call. It took only a few minutes for Bill to get to the Browns' home. Following gas company procedure, he went to the back door of the house first. To me, it was just, at that point, just another call that I was going on. I figured on my way back, I would go to the front door, maybe they didn't hear me. There was a car in the driveway, and there was a car out in front of the house. When there was no answer at the front door either, Bill reported back to the yeah, office. Yeah, poor Steve. Uh, I don't get uh, any answer over here at this uh, residence on Main Street. Can you give him a call? 10-4, I'll make the phone call. Even though we instruct the customers to stay, they don't always stay. There was no answer. The Browns seemed to have gone out. But Bill was not convinced. So he went next door to talk to their neighbor, Wilson Acuna. I saw somebody walking around the house. I think uh, something better be wrong. What is this guy doing here? Hi. Hi, I'm from the gas company. He wanted to know if I seen the Rangers. I say, no, I haven't seen them. I just had a gut feeling there was something weird here. TV was on, lights on. 
cars in the driveway. To me, that would sound like somebody's home. And I then proceeded to check around the door frame for carbon monoxide right around the lock where you can get some draft through. And it got me 200 parts per million. It was real high for me to get a reading outside the door like that. So I knew it had to be really bad inside. But even in an emergency, gas company employees can't break into private homes. Hi, can I borrow your phone? I got a problem. You can feel your heart pumping. And you just think of uh, the steps that you were taught of what to do in an emergency situation. Uh, I think the people might be inside. Uh, I'm going to need the paramedics and the police over here as soon as you can. Skokie 911. Dispatcher Mark Klinghoffer took the call for help at 3.35 p.m. They gave me the address. Attention, rescue truck 17. As I was dispatching the call 18? to the ambulance, I realized that I knew the people that lived in the house. I've known the Browns for close to 20 years. It was the first time I ever realized that I'd be dispatching calls to friends and people that I, that I knew and loved. I thought that it might be just, you know, the people that called, gas company, took a long time getting there, they went out somewhere. I think we got some people inside here. But uh, the serviceman was convinced that there was a good chance somebody was in the house. He found carbon monoxide, 200 parts per million. You know, I was hoping he was wrong because I was afraid that if he was right, they would be dead. We noticed that there was no smell of natural gas, so most likely if there was a problem, it was carbon monoxide. Somebody in the kitchen. Somebody open some windows. There's one in here. And he was unconscious and apparently not breathing. I checked for a pulse and he did have a pulse. Oh, we got another victim. We got another one in there. It's okay, ma'am. We're the Skokie Fire Department. Relax, relax. We're trying to get you out of here. Probably come by gases. He just had a lot of red color in him, like he was on fire or something. It's a scary scary moment. But the female patient was apparently experiencing impaired judgment at the time, which is not unusual for carbon monoxide poisoning. When Bill checked the furnace, he found it was burning fuel improperly, giving off deadly carbon monoxide gas. He shut it down until it could be repaired. He's starting to assist a little on ventilation. Let's get him over onto the board. OK, back. The paramedics went to work on Bob immediately. Can we get his arms down? When they were taking her out the front door, the female patient passed out. Her condition was critical. The male patient was breathing, but he was breathing shallow, not very deep respiration. So our initial treatment was to make sure that he was getting enough oxygen and to kind of control his breathing for him. He wouldn't have lasted much more than maybe 10 minutes in that condition. This is Ron. I'm going to put some oxygen on. This is going to help you. You're always explaining what you're doing to a patient in the hopes that at some time they'll respond to you. Start an IV on you. On the way to the hospital, Bob regained consciousness. The paramedic started talking to me. And he said, Mr. Brown, you and your wife just had an accident. You had carbon monoxide poisoning. I look around, I says, where's my wife? My wife. Well, how's she? Forgive me. I became frightened for her. Bob and Magda Brown were taken to Lutheran General Hospital for treatment. At the hospital, they were pushing us out on the gurneys, and we were just about alongside each other when we touched hands on the gurney going in. And I felt better. The Browns were put in a pressurized room to force the carbon monoxide out of their red blood cells. Their daughter, Rochelle, could only watch and wait. One of the paramedics grabbed me over to the side. 
and said, I don't know if you realize this, but we're talking another two or three minutes and both of your parents would have been dead. <laughs> it was like hearing that, it's, a, it's just a tremendous kick. And all I could think was, you know, I looked at both of them and they went, oh, okay, they're, they're here now. And it just struck me um, how remarkably lucky I was. I have tremendous faith and I feel that God has some calling for me because it, he saved me in Auschwitz and he saved me this time. So maybe I have a few more years to go and spread some joy in this world. <laughs> Nearly a year later, Magda and Bob got a chance to meet Bill Kruger for the first time. Oh my goodness! Meeting Bill for the first time was gratifying to me. It was a shock because I'd never seen him. I, I've seen a picture of him in the newspaper, and I've talked to him on the phone several times. Thank you um, uh, over and over and over again. And it was nice to be able to say to him, thank you for saving my life. What else can you say? I just did something that maybe other people would have done too in that same, same instance. I just did my job. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel, real life. Medicine Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.